Today, I am looking through apartment and hotel computers to see what PII, personally identifiable information, has been left upon them. Now, we have this Mac. Good looking Mac. <laughs> Let's go through some files. So, the oldest file on here is from August 5th, 2020 at 10.33 a.m. As this has not been cleared or checked or monitored since 2020. We have one here that says application for a U.S. passport, which is a passport application for a U.S. passport form. And if we scroll, we see this person's full name, date of birth, social, email, phone number, place of birth, address, and their father, same information I just said, and what country they want to visit, which is the Caribbean or Caribbean, depending on how you pronounce it. So lots of PII right here, and it's just a application for a US passport. So that's fun. Right here, we have a Wells Fargo high yield savings account. Balance of over $201,000 and only fifteen fifty five paid in interest this year. Doesn't seem right to me. With an ending balance of over $201,000, only $15 paid in interest. Tisk, tisk, Wells Fargo. Say, it seems like they're taking all your money, Wells Fargo. There's another thing on here for Geico. Car insurance. And their car number and their vehicle ID number. There is one named Booby Goods PDF which is a coloring book. Very nice. Booby Goods. He's an entrepreneur. That's his store. Booby Goods. He's a thought leader. <laughs> With Booby Goods. Anyway. <laughs> Unknown.jpg. Oh, show this. Show this. Hey, yo. <laughs> Why is his tongue sticking out like that? <laughs> That's a thought leader, if I've ever seen one. <laughs> oh, we have another passport renewal application here. What's this one? Another, another passport form. E-commerce startup template model two. Oh yeah. Advertising spend, $5,000. Total orders, 143. What are these orders priced as? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, this one's a good one. Show this one, show this one. Mysterious scan, question mark? A PlayStation gift card picture. Very nice. Very nice. It's called Desktop Goose. So, in the end, nothing protecting this computer. Lots of things you can download and lots of sensitive information left by people. Um, 
and their mother and father's and their own social security number and phone number and email and address and full name and birth city and they're going to the Caribbean. So, all bad news. On to the next location. We got the rice cooker. There it is. There it is. So, unfortunately, all the other hotels we went to, their computers were blocked by Uniguest, which, more on that later. But I have this watch. It was recommended to me on Twitter um, by one of you guys, so I bought it. See? Yeah. Wait, switch hands. Wait. There we go, okay. Oh yeah. Now, Uniguest. What is Uniguest? Or Unigest? I don't know how to pronounce it. This is Uniguest Hotel Hub. Maximize guest experience with connected engagement technology. Centralized digital signage, interactive TV, casting, and wayfinding for hotels. Whatever that means, wayfinding. Brand transformation with scalable cloud-based digital engagement. Which, when I was at these hotels, it literally just popped up a screen. You just had the browser, and it said, search. And then you could see the files, but... I guess they're cleared out every session. So not much of good findings there. But according to this article, hard-coded credentials in Uniguest kiosk software lead to API compromise. July 11th, 2019. It says Uniguest kiosk software will restrict the user to simple tasks, such as browsing the web or printing boarding passes. Uniguest is the global leader in providing highly secure fully managed customer-facing technology solutions on an outsourced basis to the hospitality, senior living, specialty retail, education, and corporate sectors. But apparently, Uniguest had an exposed website publicly, ucrew.uniguest.com, which appeared to contain all the tools their technicians would need to deploy or manage a kiosk on location. And I went to ucrew.uniguest.com, um, and requires you to log in with M365. So I don't know if they changed it, but you cannot access this anymore, to my knowledge. So by the time this person did it, there was no authentication required. So now there is. Yay for authentication. And among the pre-packaged kiosk software and manual, System Sleuth stood out. System Sleuth is written in C Sharp and is therefore trivially decompiled back to source code using something like DN Spy. So apparently, according to this, System Sleuth is an application that is deployed to their legacy kiosk, and its purpose appears to be the collection of kiosk information, such as product keys, assets, tags, passwords, and other various data. And then this data is sent to Salesforce API. And then with the C-sharp, they stumbled upon some API credentials, which were hard-coded. And it says the Salesforce API is accessible via the SOAP protocol. So AP, SOAP, I just call it SOAP. It says, first, we need a session ID issued by authenticating to the Salesforce SOAP API. The server responds with a session key, which we can use in subsequent requests. Yay. Session replay activated. We can now dump all the data in the Uniguest Cloud database, which includes admin, router, and BIOS passwords, product keys, and various other sensitive information, for which it looked like all of Uniguest customers. So all of that sensitive information just... Out in the open, plain text, yay. So it says, with information in hand, adversaries could deploy keyloggers, remote access trojans, and various forms of malware. Okay, yeah, so it says, Uniguest has been contacted and since placed this site behind an authentication portal, which I discovered. 
Locking down a Windows machine enough that it can be trusted in a public setting such as a hotel lobby is a daunting task. Restrictions imposed by Active Directory Group Policy Objects, ADGPOs, or Custom Explorer shells are often trivial to bypass, giving attackers access to the whole system. The following is an example of a successful sandbox escape in one of Uniguest kiosks, revealing system sleuth.exe on the disk, ready to be exfiltrated and analyzed. Okay, okay, so when, when accessing the Uniguest, I was accessing the Uniguest system, I could see all of the documents, such as what this screenshot is saying. Um, so I'm curious to see if System Sleuth was on one of the kiosks that I accessed. So they said they disclosed these to Uniguest. Um, they fixed it, but he went back to verify their fixes, and then they found more issues. An older version of the System Sleuth binary referenced a different account for the Salesforce API and also contain a reference to an open API used to gather asset inventory data. The asset byid.php and asset by serial.php tools also exist and allow query by asset ID or serial number. An authenticated Git request to this open API using the asset ID returns information to the public. Yay. So their lessons learned, use a write only API key, deploy per customer databases, do not reuse API keys or credentials between customer deployments. Duh. Also, use authentication. Don't hard code API keys. And also, C Sharp. Also, they say a potential alternative to system sleuth in the APIs to manage these assets using something like Intune. Yeah. Why weren't they using Intune? The simple answer is to dispose of applications like system sleuth and Salesforce API. So, we learned a lot. We shared laughs and we discovered a really vulnerable hotel lobby lockdown kiosk thing called Uniguest. Um, yeah, feel free to make some Uniguest conspiracies, AKA the dark side of hotel kiosks, Uniguest. Anyways, hope you guys got something out of that. Had some fun, learned something. Make sure to like, subscribe, Punch all the buttons in the face, and I will see you in the next video.